Yo, what's up, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Action Jackson, man. And in today's video, I'm going to be uh, bringing you guys my thoughts on what I think about Tyron Smith moving to right tackle on Sunday against the Jacksonville Jaguars, man. So before we hop into the video, I would appreciate if you guys would like the video, subscribe if you're new, comment, and share the video with anyone who you think might enjoy my content. So hopping straight into it, man. Um, as you guys know, I, I was breaking... And I was bringing out the reports in the news that other people already broke before me. Like everyone's big journalist out in the Cowboy community. Um, you know, T.Y. only got signed, of course, but mainly we're talking about offensive line. And since Terrence Steele tore his ACL and MCL both, which is sad, tragic news on uh, Sunday against the Houston Texans, he was easily having a, he was easily having one of the best uh, seasons for an offensive lineman, but it's specifically in his position so then news reports came out because obviously you know we're booting up or suiting up to go play against the jacksonville jaguars in jacksonville so obviously um you know we was going to figure out how we're going to do this right tackle position right so now what it seems like what the, what the first news that was reported was that we were going to have a a ro a rotation at right tackle with Josh Ball and Jason Peters. Now, since the news got broke out that Tyron Smith is going to play, which I, what I said was that he was going to come back against Philly, and I was after hearing about it, I was like, he's going to come back against Philly because that would be his game to warm up and that would give him extra week rest. But I, everybody was saying that he was already ready, which was true by all the pictures that were coming in after the bye week. You know, everyone's saying Tyron Smith look good. He look, he's smiling. He's back in the building, you know. So, now since him coming in at right tackle, which is a savior for us, because how I thought, because no one predicts injuries of any on anybody, but specifically on your team. So, I was thinking, you know, if Tyron Smith stays at right tackle, your best five is left tackle Tyron, left guard Tyler, kick Tyler Smith inside, Biotish, Martin Steele. Now, Plans have changed, of course. Steals out. Now, Tyron Smith is playing right tackle. At first, um, how I felt about it, I was like, you know, I, I can't, I can't say it's gonna be hard on him because I call him a walking Hall of Famer, him and Zach Martin. So if you're, you know, he played right tackle as you see the screen screenshot right here, 2011, his rookie year. Um, he's going now. He's gonna be playing right tackle. And um, I believe he'll be, he'll be fine. I uh, he, there was a quote today that you know they asked him you know how about the change and you know it's like riding a bicycle. He had said, so I, I think he's going to be just fine playing at right tackle next to Zach Martin. That's going to be elite right side. You now you now you having your right side being elite again. Now you have Tyler Smith playing left tackle, Connor McGovern playing left guard, your center being Tyler Biotis, and your right guard being Zach Martin, of course. Now what this leaves is now you leave Jason Peters as your uh, swing tackle. But I felt that is as, you know, if we should have just put in left guard, I mean, left guard, Tyler Smith, left tackle, Tyron, Biosh at center, Martin at right guard. And then you put Peters at right tackle. That's how I felt. That's how I still feel as who is your best five at your offensive line position. Now... I still like this option the way we're going because Connor McGovern has been having a really solid season. So taking him out makes no sense. And then that's when you get into the continuity issues. But I also believe what Vosh Lombardi says, and uh, I will take talent over continuity and talent beats continuity every day of the week. So, you know, since your talent is, since you're, you're leaving one of your talents off the field, which is fine. But uh, the current state of the offensive line, just to refocus, your current state of your offensive line and on Sunday moving forward into the playoffs, left tackle Tyler, left guard McGovern, center Biotish, right guard Martin, and your right tackle going to be uh, Tyron Smith, man. Um, that's how I feel. I felt like your best five should have been, uh, your both tackles should have been, you know, left tackle being... Smith, right tackle Peters, your two guards being Smith, Martin in your center being uh, Biotish, 
and I felt like those that gives you your best five offensive line. But hey, you know it's fine. I like the five that we have. Um, I love T.Y. Hilton coming into the building. Um, great reports coming out from from him. So you know it's shaping up really good. Still, you know we have a lot of losses in terms of in, internally, but I felt like we're going to be just fine. Um, there were some things I didn't talk about, and uh, that's Trayvon Millen, uh, 2019. He was a second round pick. I didn't talk about that, and which is my fault because I should have made the video because I knew as soon as the Cardinals released Trayvon Mullen that I had a strong feeling that the Dallas Cowboys were going to get him because they looked at him during the draft, the entire draft process in 2019. But not only that, the Dallas Cowboys, he fit the criteria. He was a 6'1", 6'2", so he's a lengthy corner. He came out of from the college, you know, the University of Clemson. Um, he was a top 75 pick. And, you know, more wide range, you know, top 100 pick, you know, so Dallas Cowboys, they love those guys. They love getting those projects. If you were a former 100 pick and you're still in your 20s, the Dallas Cowboys will take a chance on you. So I would I'm really intrigued to see what Trayvon Millen is going to do. But like I said, I really I still have hope and faith in uh, a Kelvin Joseph. Yeah, the, he lets a big play give up here and there, but he always finds a way to stay in coverage and i have something i really like about him is that he's one of our most purest corners no he's not like trayvon Diggs, where he can play on the ball um he has to get a little bit better at turning his head around but every single time you see kelvin joseph get a mate you know gets a play made on him he's right there he's always there now the only thing that that needs to be done is filming coaching everything like that all we have to do is just fix on those little nuanced plays where hey you know, receiver catch the ball, bow down on one hand, you know, things like that. You know, just little nuanced things that he just needs to uh, fix on. And Trevon, you know, Kelvin Joseph is a really, really solid corner. So this Trevon, but refocusing back on Trayvon Mullen, what that does for Trayvon Mullen is that really just gives us added depth, which, which is what we need anyway, because us losing Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis was a big loss to our season. And I think with Trevon, you know, with emergencies of uh, Kelvin Joseph is already a solid dude, but he just needs to prove it to us. Deron Bland, the emergency of him, the emergence of him, and then you bring in a Trevon Mullen, and then you still got uh, other options still at corner. Uh, Trevon Mullen basically is just a depth signing, which is what we need, and he is a former top 100 uh, selected player, and he's 25 years old still, so still has a lot left in the gas, man. You know, my bad, still a lot left in the tank. So uh, that's about it for the video, y'all. Um, hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe. Stay blessed. See ya. Bye.